Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski from joybaking.com. Today we are going to make an apple pie. The first thing I'm going to show you how to do is to make the apple filling. Now you will need um, eight cups, which is about two liters of sliced apples. Now you can use any firm textured apple that won't lose its shape during baking. That could be like a Granny Smith or a Braeburn or a Rome, a Golden Delicious or even a Jonathan. And I'm going to show you how I slice the apples. What I do is take the apple and then with a sharp knife cut it in half and then just take the half and on either side of the core I'm just going to slice straight down and then across the bottom of the core here I'm going to make a slice and then with the paring knife I'm just going to take the skin off you can use one of those um, apple peelers if you have that And then I'm going to just slice it into quarter inch, which is about a half a centimeter slices. And then just put them in here. I've done that already. So then what you do is take about a tablespoon or so of fresh lemon juice. And we're going to toss the apples with that. And that will prevent browning. And then to that, I'm going to add a quarter of a cup, about 55 grams of light brown sugar, a quarter of a cup, about 50 grams of granulated white sugar, uh, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. We need cinnamon apples. And a quarter teaspoon of salt. And you can also add a quarter of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. I'm not crazy about nutmeg, so I'm going to leave that out. And then I'm going to just toss that. Now normally what you would do for most apple pie recipes is you would just take this filling and put it in your pie shell and top it with the top crust and bake it. But the problem with that is, is that apples have a lot of water. So as it bakes, the apples release their juices and then there's the filling shrinks and then you end up with the gap between the top crust and the filling which doesn't look very attractive so Rose Le uh, Levy uh, Berenbaum in the pie and pastry um, Bible cookbook came up with this great idea and that was to get the apples to release their juices before we bake the filling and all you have to do to do that is just leave this filling just like this at room temperature for about either like 30 minutes and up to three hours and that will um, then the apples will release their juices so that's what we're going to do we're just going to leave this and uh, what I'm going to do is then show you how to do the pie crust our apple pie needs both a top and a bottom layer of pastry now I have a pie crust recipe uh, on the site along with the video that shows you how to make the dough as well as how to roll out and fit it into the bottom pie pan, which I have done here. Now just trim the edges of the uh, pastry to the edge of the pan and don't flute it or tuck it under, just leave it like that. And now what I'm going to do is show you how to roll out the top layer of pastry. Now just on a lightly floured surface and just uh, lightly flour the top and as well your rolling pin. Now have your uh, pastry chilled. Let's chill it for about an hour after you make it and then I'm going to um, roll it into a 12 inch, it's about a 30 centimeter round. So just make sure roll from the center outwards we want to try to keep it in a round shape and just keep moving it around that way it won't stick to your counter if it does just let, put a little more flour down if it sticks to your rolling pin just slightly flour and just keep rolling if you find as you roll it's kind of getting out of shape just kind of pat it back 
And always kind of feel your dough to make sure it's uh, even thickness. You want it about uh, an eighth of an inch thick all around. And if it kind of um, splits a bit, just kind of put it back together. It takes a little practice. The more you do it, the better you'll get. So just move it around, keep moving it until you get it to put the right size. As you can see, there's all little flecks of butter in this uh, dough, and that's the way uh, it should be. So as you can see, it's not, it gets a little out of shape, just kind of pat it. You can eyeball it to about 12 inches, or you can just get out a ruler and actually measure it. That looks about right. So what I'm going to do is roll it around my rolling pin lightly. And if you see a lot of flour on the bottom, just slightly brush that off. And then have a uh, baking sheet lined with parchment or wax paper. And I'm just going to transfer that. Just unroll it. That, and then cover it with plastic wrap. And I'm going to cover also this back up with plastic wrap. And then what we're going to do is just pop this back in the refrigerator to chill while we finish off the apple filling. So our apple filling has now been sitting at room temperature for about an hour. And as you can see, quite a bit of uh, juices have been released from the apples. So now what we want to do is drain the apples. And what I've done is put a strainer over a bowl. And I'm just going to dump all this in. And then I'm going to just leave this to drain for about 15 to 30 minutes until you have about a half a cup that's 120 milliliters of juice. So our apples have drained for about a half hour and as you can see they have released quite a bit of juice and what I'm going to do is pour this juice into a four cup that's about a liter uh, heat proof measuring cup that has been lightly sprayed with a nonstick vegetable spray. And then I'm going to put this in the microwave and boil it for about um, five to eight minutes or until it's reduced to about a third of a cup that's 80 milliliters. And it will get very thick and syrupy and really nicely car uh, caramelized. And what we're going to do after that is then pour it back into the uh, apple filling. And it is going to add such depth of flavor. It's really nice. So, oh, I'm going to, uh, almost forgot. I'm going to add to this two tablespoons, um, it's about 30 grams of unsalted butter at room temperature. And I'm going to boil that along with the uh, apple juice. So about five to eight minutes. So our uh, apple juices have been reduced uh, to about a third of a cup. And as you can see, they're wonderfully thick and syrupy. And this is really uh, going to add a nice apple caramel flavor to the uh, filling. So first what I'm going to do is add about one and a half tablespoons of, that's about 20 grams of corn starch, or you may know it as corn flour. And that just thicken everything up once we uh, add the juice. So just toss that with the apples. And while uh, I was boiling the syrup, I took out the top crust of the pastry just so it softens a little. You don't want it too firm. So, and then what I'm going to do is just um, pour over this wonderful. Uh, thick syrup, add that back in. Make sure you get it all. And just give it a toss. Let's see, isn't that wonderful? Okay. So what I'm going to do is just um, take 
the plastic off of our crust and just pour all that in there. So what we're going to do is just um, try to even the filling out as much as possible. Kind of get keep it away from the uh, outside edge of the pastry and just kind of flatten it. Try to get it even all the way across. Get my hands off and then just take your top layer of pastry and put it over the top. And then what we're going to do is just tuck it under that bottom crust. And that'll seal the edges. Just go around and tuck it under as best as you can. That gives us a nice thick outside crust edge, which is the best part. If you like pastry, which I do. So there we go. Now, there's a few things you can do to seal this. You could just take the tines of a fork and just kind of press it down, or you could take your um, two fingers like this and then just flute it. I'm just going to go around and just to seal that outside edge. Okay, so there we have it. So what we want to do is to let the uh, air escape as, and the steam as it's um, baking. So what I'm going to do is take a sharp knife and just make five, about two inch, that's five centimeter slits in the center, just like that. And that way the steam from the as the apples bake can escape. So there we have it. So what I'm going to do is just um, put this back in the refrigerator to chill while we preheat our oven. You need your oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 220 degrees Celsius. And put your oven rack in the lower third of the oven. And if you have a baking stone, you can put that in there. Or you could just put... Um, a baking sheet like this with a piece of aluminum and foil and put that in the oven as you're preheating it so it'll get nice and, and hot and then just line it with a, the foil and then we'll bake it. So I'm just going to put this in the fridge. So our oven is now ready. So what we're going to do is uh, bake the uh, pie for about 45 to 55 minutes or until the juices start to bubble through the slits. And when you put a, a sharp knife down through the slit into the apples, they will be um, tender, not mushy, you just want them tender. Now after about, say, 30 minutes, you might notice that the outside crust is getting really quite brown. So what you want to do is either one of these uh, pie shields, put it over like that, or you could just take some aluminum foil and put it around the outside because we don't want that, the outside crust to brown. So into the oven for about 45, 55 minutes. Okay. So our apple pie is done. As you can see, it looks lovely. The crust is, is a nice golden brown color. And if you put a, your knife into the apples, they'll be tender, but they're not going to be really mushy. So now we don't want to cut into this right away. I'm going to leave it about three, four hours. And that, in that time, the juices will thicken. And then I'll cut you a slice. 
So let's cut a slice. I'm going to use a sharp knife and just cut, make sure you cut all the way through the bottom crust. And then it's one of these. Make sure I got it all. Whoop, falling apart a little. There you go. And uh, a nice slice of apple pie. Very good with uh, some vanilla ice cream. So until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.